Conservative MPs have called for a plan B to tackle the small boats crisis as the Home Secretary Suella Braverman told MPs the court's decision is disappointing for the majority of the British people. Well, we're joined now by UK Director of More in Common, Luke Trill. Really good to see you this morning, Luke. Thank you so much for your company. I just wanted to ask you about the Home Secretary's comments. Suella Braverman telling MPs yesterday that this was disappointing for the majority of British people. Would you agree with that statement? Well, I think public attitudes to the Rwanda policy are more nuanced than we're often led to believe. Um, I mean, to start with, there is no doubt that right across the public, people want channel crossings to be stopped. They think they're unfair. They think that they empower people smugglers. Uh, and they don't like the fact that we don't seem to have control over our borders. If you ask them about the Rwanda policy directly in a poll, what, they, what will tend to come out is that more people support it than not. But we've never had a majority in public polling say that they support the plan. And then if you ask them the second question, which is, do you think this plan will work? Um, usually you get quite a big majority saying they don't think it will. So, so there's a lot of different facets. People want the boats to stop. More say they support Rwanda than don't, but then say it won't work. And interestingly, when you ask people about, you know, should we be deporting genuine refugees to Rwanda, mm. then the public say no. So when they get into the details of the plan, they actually like it a lot less. It's interesting, people making that distinction there between economic migrants who they believe should be deported versus genuine refugees who they don't. But, um, Luke, I know you've done so much polling and you've done focus groups around this. I want to ask you about something that went a little viral on social media last night and this morning, which is the, question, the BBC Question Time audience. They were asked, does anyone at all support this policy? No one in that audience put up their hand. That doesn't sound like it matches with the polling you've been do doing. My, my question is, is the audience unrepresentative on that programme? Or is there some sort of other effect going on here, social embarrassment or something about what people feel when they're asked to put up their hand in public? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Uh, and as I said, you know, people, when they get into the details of the Rwanda policy, have concerns. But when we in a focus group or in a poll uh, ask that straight question, we would never get that sort of resounding silence for people uh, being in favour of the Rwanda policy. And I think there are two reasons uh, that you hinted at why that question time audience doesn't quite capture uh, the public mood. Firstly, what's known as social desirability bias, the sense that actually you don't want to put your hand up and back something that you think other people might judge you for. So I suspect there were some shy supporters of the policy there. And then the second thing is you have to remember that even though question time tries really hard to get a politically balanced audience, they are much more highly engaged than the average voter. Most average voters don't want to sit and watch a politics show for two hours. I'm sorry to say this uh, to the two of you. Um, uh, so they're getting people who are generally kind of more highly engaged, and that tends to make them slightly more liberal as well. So those two reasons meant, you know, I know lots of people saw it and they're like, wow, everyone hates the policy. It's not quite true. And actually campaigners would be better focusing on the fact that people don't want to see, for instance, victims of modern slavery, women, children, and being deported to Rwanda. They want us to clamp down on economic migrants and, crucially, people smugglers. Luke Trill, really good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for your analysis.